So the last academy that we did uh, was up in Scotland. Uh, that was in November. Um, so there's been seven releases since then. Uh, I'll be honest, the majority of the things that we have released have been bug fixes. Um, we've been working on something, you know, not something small uh, in the background uh, whilst we've been maintaining these releases. Um, but we have had some feature updates, um, some things which uh, you may not be aware of or you, you may be aware of and don't realize there's a fix for. Um, so the first thing that we've done is on Paybridge balance imports. So this is where you can take a export of all your account balances from your back office finance systems and import them into your system and allow your customers to be able to, uh, to kind of look up their reference numbers, see what the balance is and then pay the balance site. Um, we've automated that. Um, you can now drop those files uh, via FTP onto the server and a background task will pick them up and process them. Um, so you can update them kind of uh, daily if you want to do an export daily or you know, as, as, uh, as often as you want to export those balances from your, your back office system, um, it can be up updated. Um, so, so that's something that, uh, I mean, Paybridge has always had balances in it, but um, it's something which kind of makes that process a little bit easier to manage. Um, and the other uh, thing that we've done is we've removed the requirements for sessions to be active when you come back from making a card payment. Uh, this is the dreaded unverified payment uh, issue, if you're familiar with it. Um, basically, customer goes off to the payment portal, and by the time they come back to your website, their session has expired and we can't validate who they are. Um, so the payment and the form don't get marked as completed. Um, we've kind of removed that. We've added some additional checks in there which don't rely on the session. Um, so hopefully, once you've got that version, um, you should see your unverified payments kind of disappear. Uh, so the roadmap, um, we've got uh, the new form builder, which uh, kind of came out yesterday. Um, we've got uh, some stuff for GDPR. Um, but that's coming along in April. Um, and we've got some support for the organizational stuff, which Tom will be going through um, from within XFP. That coming up. Uh, Gov uh, UK Pay, uh, new payment adapter um, using the Gov UK Pay. Uh, so I'll hopefully show you a bit of that today. Um, and then kind of moving sort of uh, outwards in terms of uh, sort of time to deliver, we'll be looking at improving reporting. It's probably the biggest kind of feature request that I get at the moment is, is how do we get reports for certain things. Um, I've got a massive list of every report I've ever been requested on, and we'll start working our way through them. Um, and, then, uh, and then we've got some kind of enhanced branching, single page forms, and uh, improving our booking service. With the organizational features, we've uh, already delivered some of it. Um, we've, uh, you can pre-populate your form questions with your organizational details. You can determine the type of user account that you've got um, and you can submit on behalf of a business. Um, coming soon, you can create a business account from a form and you can set up the different permissions on who can actually fill in a form. Uh, we've partnered with Canterbury uh, to deliver the Gov UK Pay adapter. Um, that will be coming along in April. Um, it's kind of in test at the moment. Uh, so the form builder, I think probably if you were kind of a regular at these academies. You'll have heard me speak every single time about the form builder and say <laughs> it's coming in November or January or September or whichever month is three months from that academy. Um, and finally, I get to say that it's been released. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So obviously, as I'm standing here, I'm taking all the credit for all the work and the uh, Comets team, which is develops XFP, are back in the office and right now. Um, so thanks. The, um, <laughs> so what's so good about it? Um, well, we've made it easier to use. The, uh, we've modernized the way that forms are built. It's drag drop. It's kind of, we've got shareable pages. Update a page in one place, it'll push it out to all the forms which use it. Um, we've got rollback and versioning on pages. In-page branching, no more JavaScript to try and hack that into the current form builder. Uh, separate your pages into sections and hide and show and display sections that you need. Uh, repeat the same questions over again and again and again until the user has answered them as many times as they want or until the limit you've set them. Um, and for those of you familiar with CXM, we've introduced the rules engine. So I was really kind of uh, sort of 
looking looking at Rotherham's form earlier, kind of through my, through my kind of hands, because all of those different branches to calculate certain things. You know what? The rules engine would have made that a linear form with a couple of decisions in the rules engine. So, um, but uh, yes. Um, so we've got I've got a massive document of FAQs because uh, I'm sure there's thousands of questions. But I thought I'd pick out a few of the highlights from it. Um, how can how can you get it? it? It's released in Continuum XFP 75. Um, so that came out yesterday. Uh, you can start filling in your support tickets and requesting support for a patch to that version. Um, you can get that version, but I've got to, or Jardu has got to come along and turn it on, initially anyway. Um, I don't really fancy everybody getting it all at once and then there'll be an issue found and then kind of all that. So select customers are getting it initially and then we'll start the wider enabling um, after a few weeks of that. Uh, is there any cost? Not for the core software. It's part of the continuum release process. It's, it's part of the continuum platform. Professional services uh, to style all uh, some of the new interface components. So we've got some new functionality. We've got a matrix component. We have repeatable questions. We have hidden sections. We have things like that, none of which you have in your current templates. Um, so small professional service charge to do that. Or if you've got the skills in-house, we can tell you what to do, and you can do it yourself and save yourself some money. Uh, will my old form still work? Yes, they will. Well, at least until 2020, uh, end of the year, December uh, 2020. Um, so we haven't touched any of your old forms. It's important to stress this. The new form builder sits side by side. Your, old, your forms as they are now will remain untouched, front end untouched, everything about them untouched. The only thing that will change is you now have a second option on how to build forms, and that's using the new form builder. Um, we can only support the uh, older form builder for so long, and uh, at the moment that will be until December 2020. Um, and more information, I'm going to be holding some webinars uh, over the next coming weeks, um, so look out for the invites for that and join that. Um, I've published some FAQs, and also come and speak to me if you want more information. So I'm going, to, I'm going to build, in two minutes, a payment form, which will go to GovUK. So I'm going to start off with the uh, create new form. So we'll call this payment to GovUK. Uh, we've still got to give it categories. Helps it know where it's placed in the website. Uh, OK, I'm going to leave all the other options as they are. So got my form structure. I already know that I've got a page in my system which I've already created uh, for collecting service details. So, or payment details, or... Uh, they are, there's definitely something in here. Oh, I'm going to have to... Get, tell you what, I'll create a new page. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what, I do live demos every time, and I'm normally well rehearsed. And since Sarah I said two minutes, I'm like, ah. Uh, uh, Okay, so what I'm going to do, and now, uh, uh, so I've given the page a name. I now need to drag some questions on it. So we're going to drag on text field, which we're going to call amount or similar amount, and that's going to be the amount that we're going to enter to to pay for the service. And that is going to be my form. Um, so that is my page. The page is drag drop. We drag and push things around. I've got my page down the bottom here. I drag it into my form. I can rename it, so we'll say pay for Gov UK, um, and we will save that. I'm now going to go out of rule and set up the payments on it. So this is the rules engine, and in that uh, we have different options. So we'll say pay for service. Uh, so we got when the user submits the form. So that's when they've actually submitted the form, and we can do something with it. We can send it to CXM. We can do stuff like that. What we actually want to do is we want to do something before the user reaches the end of the form, and that is make a payment. So we choose make a payment. From here, we're going to create a new service or a new template. We're going to create pay for it. Under the service, we'll choose the GovUK pay service, which I've already got set up. I knew I had that bit set up. Um, and in here, we are going to choose the amount question. So we've got the question there. I'm going to put some reference numbers in here. These will be your fun codes or any other codes that you might want to send. 
And then I'm going to click, no, I didn't save that one. Um, and then we have now integrated that form with that payment. Uh, and I'm going to make it live. And we're all going to hope for the best. <laughs> so here's our new form. I'm going to pay £10. Uh, get the confirmation of my answers, how much are. Now I go into PayBridge, view my order. I'm about to pay for it. So we'll go off to GovUK Pay. Here we are. Uh, and to put some card details in. <coughs> and then some details. I can hear councils abandoning their payment system by their drones <laughs> to move to pay. pay them. Yeah, I've got some feedback on it, so don't do it immediately. Um, but um, uh, <laughs> there, there are things that it lacks. So if you're interested in going to WK Pay, please speak to me first, because I've got some uh, feedback which I can give you. Are you uh, going to give it to GDS as well, hopefully? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so I've now submitted my form, made a payment for WK Pay, and um, I can see my received form uh, in here. So uh, what was that? About three minutes to build a that form with payments? Three minutes, um, 15 seconds. Yeah. So, so obviously the webinar will be slightly longer than that, and I'll go into things a little bit more detail. Um, but um, yeah, that's me done. Thanks, Andy. Thank no you problem. very much.